Huh. Well, that's not what you want. Looks like my idiot light just turned on. And I have terrible acceleration. I bet I know what that code is. But we got a misfire. Well, we'll uh, limper back home and uh, see what uh, see what we get on the the code scanner. We got our cheap little code reader hooked up. Let's see what we got shown. See what the ECM has in it. Pretty sure I know what we got. I bet we got a misfire. Not sure what cylinder, but let's see. There we go. Uh, P0308. Cylinder 8 misfire detected. That could be a couple things. I know this engine... I just did spark plugs here a couple weeks ago and ended up noticing my coil packs were in pretty rough shape. They should have been replaced at that time, but I ended up opting to rebuild the bottom boots on them. Our P0308 cylinder 8 misfire. Well, let's uh, see what that is. You could have anything from a malfunctioning coil pack, maybe a bad spark plug, maybe a bad fuel injector, or you could have as bad as a broken valve spring. Do some research, you'll find out that these engines can have some issues with the coil packs. I discovered that when I was replacing spark plugs here just recently. Uh, the bottom part of those coil packs disintegrate. Uh, from what I can tell, it's a corrosion issue that you get water in the top part, the top bore. You have your spark plugs on top and you have your spark plugs on the side. The top ones, I think over time, with the heat and cold cycles, you just get moisture in there. And in that environment, that spark, that voltage, that extreme heat, you know, from the engine heating up, and up here in the north, we get uh, pretty cold winters. I think over time, those silicone boots just let water in. Even just a little bit is going to destroy uh, those those type of electrodes in those extreme conditions. That's exactly what I had going on with mine, is I had some arcing. Uh, I did a quick search on Google, and noticed that... This is kind of a common thing on these engines. You'll end up with arcing. So what I what I thought I had, it sounded like an exhaust leak. This sharp clicking sound. And it just happened that I looked one night when it was darker out. And I was just looking at the engine. I'm like, well, what the hell's going on here? And looked at it and I saw flashing arcs actually coming from the plug booths to the head or the manifold or the bolts and it was just arcing over and that was my sharp snapping sound. Let's uh, get out of the truck and we'll do some some of our testing. We'll test for air, fuel, and spark and I'll show you the methods that I'm using to determine those. So let's get at it. Well here we are under the hood. Uh, we're looking at number eight cylinder, so here I'm on the left side, the driver's side. There we go. These clips are, careful with these clips, you can break them. Yeah, no change in how the engine's running here. Okay. Okay, ignition. We have no ignition on number eight. Come back here for the exhaust. Yeah, I can smell unburnt fuel, so uh, a literal sniff test here. <laughs> I can smell unburnt gasoline, so yeah, we got fuel. I gotta do a compression test. I gotta remove the coil pack to get to the top spark plug on number eight. What you're gonna need is a eight millimeter socket. There's this one bolt up top there to pull that uh, coil pack off. So let's see, pull that, pull that, so you need your 8 millimeter. you need a ratchet of some sort, you know, electric's great, pneumatic's great, hand tools are great too. Yeah, we got the fuel feed right in the way.
Pull the bolt. Pull the pack. Okay, we're pulling a spark plug. That needs a 5 8 socket. Use a spark plug style with the rubber piece in there. Break it loose by hand. Power it out. If you're just doing this, uh, you know, if it hasn't been, I'm, I'm comfortable using power tools to take it out right now, only because I just recently did the uh, spark plugs. So I know they're not seized. So be careful. I do it all by hand if you haven't been if you haven't done this uh, for a while, or if they're still original factory plugs. The other thing is Ford recommends, or Ford doesn't recommend, they say in their procedure, heat up the engine, not fully operating temp, but not uh, cold. Doing compression tests, we got a little adapter here, the hose adapter to go down. Let's see what size this is. This is an M14 metric threads. Twist it in. Let's throw our gauge on. So I need to stop the engine from starting while I just am able to crank it. So I need to pull the fuel pump relay. This thing is a pain to get out. Number 57 on my particular model. Looks like we got compression. Looks like we got 100 and... What is that? 75 pounds? So yeah, good there. I'm confident in calling this uh, coil failure. And, uh, you know, after doing those spark plugs back, couple weeks ago. I'm also going to replace all eight because when I did those replacements I had uh, I think it was good. We'll verify again but I think I had five that were in completely degraded shape. So it's just a good idea to replace them. Plus they're original to the vehicle and uh, yeah, it's just, might as well do it now, and I'm going to keep keep the good ones just for backups. We'll replace the spark plug, and we'll leave the truck sit while I get my new parts in. So yeah, be careful not to bump the electrode, and change your gap, spin it in by hand. Working the 15 foot pounds, verify on your own vehicle with your year and everything. I don't know if Ford changed anything. Alright, there we go. We'll get the parts ordered and uh, go from there. Okay, we got our parts in. So I went with MSD 8 pack and I went with. Nice red coils. So that totally adds at least 10 horsepower just because they're red. You're going to need a ratchet, you know, electric, pneumatic. Uh, these little Milwaukee M12s are legit. Uh, you're going to want a hand ratchet. Uh, this is for tightening. I'm not going to torque my stuff back on. If you need to, I think it's like 8 foot pounds. Uh, a bunch of extensions. You're going to need your 5 16 nut driver or a socket, and you're going to need your 8 millimeter to actually pull the coil packs off of the uh, intake uh, manifold. You'll also want some dielectric grease, whether you get the big, big thing like that. You know, silicone paste is the same stuff, dielectric grease. Well, this Permatex makes a good one. Make sure to get the big ones, you'll save a lot of money, especially if you're doing these. And you're going to want to slather it on here, I'll show you that. One other tool you're going to want is some sort of step. Uh, for me, I need to be able to get up in the engine bay. These these pickups are tall, so we got to get this intake 
distribution box out of the way. Just got two hose clamps. Got to undo one on the throttle body there, one on the actual uh, filter box. And then this thing just pulls off. There are two other, these little Christmas tube plugs. These are an absolute pain to get out. There's a couple of hoses too we're going to have to pull. Uh, this guy and this guy. This one's just slip fit on, and this one has you know, some actual uh, hardware. All right, look at all that room we got. I got the number eight out. Careful on these plugs. These can break. They can pull pretty hard on mine. Again, they've been broken loose here recently, so they're pretty easy to pull out. Let's go on both sides. One more holes pulled out of the way. Remember to get that back on later. This one is, as I'm saying, these are, these can be a pain to get off. This one seems, yeah, I'll come back to that one. Yeah, see there, I just broke the tab. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna go get a pick here. I'll break, break the rest of my tabs. Ah. Looks like this little tab sticks through the back there. If you lift up on it, then it'll pull right out. I'm glad I learned that after I broke one. If you're having a hard time getting that red tab to slide back, get under there with a pick and it'll pull right back. Lift it up, pull it back, and then this guy, you push down on the black here. That'll let it loose and slides right out. This is the one in the back that's the hardest. We have uh, a left and a right side. We got a driver and a passenger. Let's see what the MSDs we got. Oh, there's two passengers. Here's a but this is our driver. Yeah, so they mark it with a 8274P and a D, passenger, driver. So let's start getting these prepped. I'll show you one, and then we'll slap them on the engine. So I just like to fill that up. And on these guys, I like to do this too. So that's your main seal against the, the bore in the head. So keep that dielectric grease in there. And yeah, should be good to go. Still get quite a bit of dielectric on these. I don't think you can ever have too much lube here.
Those look pretty sweet, actually. Tighten these back down. It's our eight millimeter. Uh, do it by hand. These are metal inserts in a plastic intake. So you don't want to over torque these because you really don't want to start uh, spinning out that that insert. It looks pretty beefy, but I don't think it'd, it could take quite a bit to do that. But yeah, that's the intake. You, <laughs> you don't want to be replacing an intake just for a, a damn coil pack. <laughs> If you're out here doing spark plugs, it took me a good four hours to do those spark plugs because you gotta get the easiest way is to take off the wheels and also take out the wheel well liners. So you can get to the ones on the side of the block. Those ones are an absolute pain to get to. These top ones are easy, as you can see. As soon as you have the coil packs off, you get the top ones out right away. All right, here we go. Sounds better. Still got our codes. I haven't yet uh, cleared those. So got our uh, PO308 code. Okay. So we got four. Yeah, generic cylinder misfire, PO308. Generic ignition coil, primary, secondary circuit. Makes sense. We had it unplugged when we did our uh, compression test. And then under permanent. OK, 
Okay, so I don't think this stupid little reader is going to clear that, but... See, it's probably not going to pull that permanent code. Yeah. So we should only have one code registered, yeah, or permanent, so I'll have to pull that later somehow. But yeah. Here we go. No codes. Make sure I didn't leave any tools under here. I don't think I did. All the hoses back in the right spot. All right, let's take her for a drive. Oh, here we go. Sounds better. Can't smell any unburnt gas either, so that's good. All right, we'll do a quick drive. Um, reset my instant mileage. Oh, I can't really tell much, much improvement in terms of throttle response or anything, but I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than it was with our misfire. I'll do a couple mile drive here, see if I get any difference in mileage. Did a quick, quick little drive. Um, 10.6 miles a gallon. I'll have to have to do a longer drive. See if there's any improvement. Overall, um, obviously we fixed the issue. That's always the the main thing you're wanting to do when you do a repair like this. Uh, secondary effects. You know, hopefully the power is a little better. Hopefully the mileage is a little better. And we'll see. Um, hopefully it doesn't get worse. But anyway. I'll do a follow-up video here in a couple of months uh, to see if I still like these plugs. I mean, they look awesome. That that red is is pretty cool under the hood there. It's just looks. Uh, MSD is no longer made in America for their parts. Uh, they are made in China, so that that kind of sucks. But I mean, hopefully they found a good company to make their stuff. Hopefully it's as good a quality as all their American-made parts used to be in the past. I'm gonna keep some of the good coil packs that I took off as a spare. I had a couple of them that were still in perfect shape. And in the meantime, uh, go take the dog for a ride and uh, see how they do on the interstate at a higher, higher rate of speed and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you on the next one.